Oh, that's really cool. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that for a Dragon Force. Hey everybody, welcome. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Joining me in a few minutes will be the awesome guitar player Mark Holcomb from Periphery, an awesome prog metal band. Mark, hey, what's going on? How is it going? What's what you been up to during this apocalyptic time? Um, I'm good, man. I can't I can't complain considering um, you know, the state of the world, the state of the music industry and I guess you've got some more time to play the guitar now and write music, right? Yeah, and practice. I, I guess that's something I could work on during this time is, uh, is work on my technique a little bit, which I've done a little bit of over the past nine or 10 months. But uh, typically it's just been writing. Like I, I've been writing almost every day and you know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not, but uh, that's the whole point of being creative, you know? Well, you know, someone invented that word guitar porn. I don't know. You got some pornographic material down there. I see with those signature guitars of yours. Yeah, the the ones on the wall. Those are the the unicorns. You know, I got the eight string PRS. That is the most like pornographic, I guess, guitar that I own. Second most pornographic is maybe the the seven string private stock. When they made that in 2015, I think that was only the second or third long scale seven string PRS ever made. So yeah, there's a couple of unicorns. I got super porn stars in my uh, arsenal, you know? Uh, so which one do you usually play? Is that the one you play right there? Is that your the one that people can actually get? Th this one is a little different. Uh, I'm playing it just because lately I've been writing with it and recording with it. This is the very first prototype they built for me in 2014. I asked Paul at the time, I was, I was just friends with him. I asked him, hey, like, could you build a long scale custom 24, like a 25 and a half inch custom 24 with a flat fretboard uh, and like sort of metal pickups in them? And he did it, he built it for me. I think they finished it in like late 2014. I always thought it was the perfect guitar. And this prototype is what the other signature models are based on. That was fucking awesome. That, you, you said you can't improvise? The solo is absolutely sick. No, man. No, man. Like, you, you're you so much better at this than I am. Jesus Christ. That was... It's hard to keep up with, dude. You gotta you gotta give me a lesson sometime, really. I want, I want an actual <laughs> Skype lesson. How did you come about, you know, approaching PRS for signature guitar? My first really good guitar was a Jackson Rhodes with, like, one, one V was offset. You know, had a flat radius, had Seymour Duncan pickups in um, Fl uh, Floyd Rose. After that, like when, when Periphery got going, I would just play anything. And then it was through a friendship with Paul Reed Smith. Because you know, Periphery's from Washington, DC. PRS is based in Maryland, which is neighboring Washington, DC. Mm -hmm. it, I believe it was 2012 or 2013 or something. Paul had one of his people email me and Misha and Jake, and they were developing a high gain amp called the Archon. It's called the PRS Archon and they wanted the feedback of a metal band and that was my first time meeting him and then it was the following nam where i ran into him and then we started talking about uh, guitars talked about how to make a guitar meet in the middle and have it be the perfect thing that i would envision and that's what this is it's a it's a it's a very special guitar to me for that reason because it's the first sort of uh, step forward in my relationship with prs you know how do you end up with those seymour duncan pickups then you know keith right you know keith Merrow. you just had him on the stream a couple days ago so, so Keith is an old friend of mine. He came to me, this is like seven or eight years ago, and he was working with Seymour Duncan. He said, hey, would you ever want to build a set with Seymour Duncan? We'll build you the perfect set of pickups. And uh, I was like, fuck yeah, let's do it. Um, at the time, I was just messing around with some bare knuckles and some DiMarzios. I kind of dropped everything. I was like, okay, I get to create the perfect pickups for me. And it was awesome. So yeah, I mean, I still play the same exact set of pickups seven or eight years later. How many guitars do you take on the road usually? Anywhere from four to six. We have songs on six strings, seven strings, and eight strings. And there are multiple tunings across those guitars. So you should see our guitar world. Like, on, you know, I think it's stage right typically or wherever we're set up. But like, it's just crazy. It looks like a freaking guitar center. There's PRS, there's Jackson, there's, uh, there's Ivanez and whatever. Sometimes Misha brings out like a wild Rick tune guitar too. So it's just like, it's just, it's like freaking modern art show. What about amp? I mean, what you're using on stage? No, I mean, um, we all just use Fractal Audio Axe Effects on stage. And uh, we have all of our presets and patch changes and they're programmed. 
we should share across the board. They're all automated through our computer that we run on stage that takes care of our backing tracks and the bass tracks since uh, we don't have a bass player. And yeah, so that's where the com complex part sort of comes in. But uh, as far as amps, at least in a live setting, it's it's very straightforward. The Axe FX is just perfect for that because you sound the same every night. Even if you're in a weird room or the stage is really woofy, you can pretty much sound consistent with the Axe FX every night. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really see us ever changing away from that. Have you guys used Axe FX? Uh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm not aware. We always use Rack preamp. So um, the last tool we used you know, campus, you got everything programmed, yep. everything ran off the click. So I programmed the computers to do all this switching of the sounds. We got like one computer to switch the audio sound, one, one is linked to the video broadcasting computer. You know, we have our own LED wall that we take on stage and this giant arcade machines with, which changes with the wall and depending on the song. Have you ever had a computer crash? Oh, of course. <laughs> I heard of the stories from Misha about that tour you guys did with Dream Theater. He told me what John Petrucci said. He wasn't very happy on that tour, right? Tell me a little bit about it. It was traumatizing. That, that, that was the pinnacle of our career at that point in time. We just showed up and we didn't have our shit together. No solid state hard drive. Our computer was crashing the first week or two very consistently. But as soon as John talked to us, you know, we fixed it. We were like, okay, this is a big deal. If the guitar player from the headlining band is having a serious sit down conversation with us, we better get our shit together like yesterday. When it went off, what was going on? You guys kept playing, obviously. But I want to go home. Like, I want to see my mom. I want to sleep in my childhood bed. I don't ever want to talk to anybody again. I'm not going to play guitar. I'm done. So I'm going to pick some questions. Some, some I don't know what it is. I'm just going to read them out. What happened to that epic riffage that did not get used in Blood Ego. I actually don't know. I mean, because, all right, so here's how Periphery works. Whenever we're writing in the studio, we post clips on Instagram. We post clips on Facebook. We post clips on Twitter. We don't care about secrecy. So we share a lot of riffs that don't make it. But uh, I always say to people, it's like when you hear a Periphery song, you're hearing maybe 20% of what we actually wrote. The other 80% that we wrote is probably just sitting on a hard drive or on one of our computers or probably Misha's computer. It may get reused at some point. That's a cool concept. I like how you guys doing that, you know, posting the riffs. I, I like that. I haven't seen that done before. So chat, what that means is you guys got to follow everyone in Periphery's social media so you can hear these riffs while the album is being created. Make, making an album is just to lose money anyway. You know, we're doing it for fun. You feel like that? Dude, I mean, we don't do it for money. To be honest, there's just not a lot to rely on from the band itself, from Periphery itself. It's not this ultra insane living that we're able to afford. We have our side income streams, you know, that we make a living off of. From Periphery itself, we treat it kind of like you said, passion project for fun, you know? So giving it away for us is just like, we get to share it with the people that we have the most gratitude towards, and which is the fans. You know? And it's kind of weird now with the pandemic, a lot of the bands would depend on touring for income is um is um struggling. It's it's pretty crazy. And you guys happen to be able to adapt that formula before the whole pandemic kicked in. So it didn't it didn't really affect you guys? Yeah, I mean frankly speaking, it, it hasn't affected us as much as I, I, I can imagine it's affected other bands because like you said, it's been an intention of ours for years to 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 become this band that didn't have to rely on touring as our primary source of income and as our main livelihood. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, we love touring. Like, touring and playing shows and connecting with fans is like my favorite thing ever, but we're all very lucky to be in this situation to where we will survive it. For, for us, it's just given us a nice excuse to be creative and to write a lot of music and to come back strong. Just so you guys know, when the pandemic's over, suddenly there'll be so many albums coming out. It's like, who is in line to release their albums? There's only room for that many releases each month. Dude, and touring too. Can you imagine how crazy the touring schedule is going to be once everybody starts getting back out there? And you had to imagine too that only a fraction of the venues that were around before will be open. So less venues, more bands touring. Venues are going to be booked every night. It's going to be the most competitive touring market that, that we can remember probably in our lifetimes, you know? What is it like growing up, you know, playing in the metal band as a one of the few Filipino guitar players? 
in the world. But I, I am half Filipino. Uh, I was born and raised in the Philippines. There were no musicians in my family. So to be a Filipino kid in the Philippines, like someday imagine myself playing guitar in a metal band for a living. It's just the most wild. Like if there's any Filipinos out there listening or watching, it's like we need you to, 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 to come up, get it together. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, you know, I don't have the guitar. I don't have the musicians in my family, too. They're, you know, they're, they're from Hong Kong. They want you to be a lawyer, a doctor, or an accountant. Were they were they approving of you doing this? Maybe that's not, hopefully not a personal question. Um, don't worry, I have no personal life anymore. Uh, <laughs> um, they they were happy I stopped playing video games and started playing guitar. But then they thought, oh, what, what's going on here? Now he's growing his hair long. Okay, chat, you guys are very impatient. Look, go on, sh throw us some question then. Go on then. Okay, it's got to be good though. What are you using right now for sound to get that sick tone you have? Um, I'm playing through an XFX3 through a, a, a preset that I've built here. It's like my, my, my main recording uh, rhythm tone. Someone's asking about a pinch harmonic in the song Reptile that we have. There's a funny pinch harmonic that we do. First of all, that pinch harmonic in the song Reptile, Reptile is in a drop G tuning. So the strings are super floppy, right? Which allows you to do these crazy wild sounding harmonics like Yeah. Well, that's really cool. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that for Dragon Force. Woo! -hoo. Woo! That was fun. Thank you so much. This is the best time for us to connect because while we're touring, we can never speak to friends at all. We just never have the time. All right. Talk soon. See you, dude. See you, everybody. See you. Bye, chat.